Fun Dinner Party Wars. Three couples compete to outdo each other in the ultimate dinner party showdown. Das ist gut. <laughs> Two experts judge their dinner dues. When somebody gives you a gift, open it and say something nice. And don'ts. That looks like somebody ate it and then passed it through their colon. Yeah, I can't take it anymore. They share one goal. Okay? There's a whole bunch of bull business going on. To be dinner party war champions. How did you get this wrong? Our first dinner party warriors are Brad, a construction worker, and Misty, a bartender. These amorous newlyweds have no doubt about who's in charge when it comes to their kitchen adventures. She's the boss and I'm a great servant. Sauerkraut, don't forget sauerkraut. I love cooking. And I love eating. Let's mix the bitter. She's got to stress to make sure everything's all nice, nice, nice. And I'm like, feed them a couple of drinks, they won't even notice the spot in the fork. <laughs> Come hungry, but have fear. Next up are Kat, a photographer, and Karen, a wood finisher. These neighbors and culinary compadres have found their inspiration in frequent fusion of the traditional and the unpredictable. We incorporate some really wacky techniques in with just traditional stuff. Okay, are you dissolved, my little friend? And I just think it's really cool. It's how you get to play with food, like really just be a kid. Some more. For our dinner party, the cooking will be spread out in between two of us. We help each other with everything. We're gonna win this party because we're gonna inject it with some awesome. And our last dinner duo are Scott, an entrepreneur, and Anil, a recruiter. This longtime married couple are experienced dinner partiers with a simple strategy in the kitchen. Listen to Anil or else. I like the leadership role, I'm an executive. Don't put too much of anything on regular sea salt. And he always gets his way. I am the leading lady. We cook well together. We do everything well together. Here, dude, come on. That's enough. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Are you making a career out of that? We're going to win because I am going to ruffle some feathers. These couples will meet for the first time when they host each other over the course of three competitive dinners. They each get $350 to spend and three hours to deliver. Only one couple can win, and that's up to our judges. Order up. This is Chef Corbin, our executive chef, who always brings his passion for food perfection to the table. He'll be judging the couples on menu selection, food presentation, and of course, taste. And this is Anthea Turner, the UK's perfect housewife, top-selling author, and our ultimate party hostess. She'll be judging the dinner parties on style, etiquette, and entertainment. They'll view each saucy detail using robot cameras. At stake, $1,000 of kitchen goodies and the grand honor to be named Dinner Party War Champions. It's day one, Dinner Party One, and the judges drop in on Brad and Misty as they're prepping their German feast. Hello there. <laughs> Did we just make you squeal? So nice to meet you. You say that now. First on the menu, hors d'oeuvres of October sausage and chivachi, a grilled Eastern European beef meatball. Next up is an appetizer of traditional goulash. For their first main, it's cabbage rolls accompanied by a potato salad. The second main is wiener schnitzel with Jaeger sauce, a German beef sauce, served with bacon chive spetzel, a traditional German noodle. And for dessert, chocolate fondue with fresh fruit. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with my goulash soup that's been in that slow cooker because I've never actually made it in a slow cooker. You making something you've never made before? Kind of, yes. It's not going to boil in there. No, you, you well, know that, right? it does most of the time when we actually make, like, stews Ooh. and stuff. Ooh. Hot? <laughs> spit it out, spit it out, spit it out! Hot? Well, it's not boiling, but it's damn hot. <laughs> they almost cooked? Yeah. Good. How's the flavor? All right. A little salty? No, actually, oh. no. I think you might need to put a little bit more in there. And it needs to be thickened up. Who's the German? None of us. Oh. Choosing a German menu, it is an unusual thing to do. Tell me why. That's the one thing I actually really, really shine in. Why? Growing up, um, I really took on the cuisine and everything uh -huh. like that. So it's German inspired. I was taught by a German how to do this. And you love it? He loves it. Go on, let's have a yes. nose round. 
Yeah, we're going to do our form. We're kind of dining in here. Are you doing that? Yes. Did I'm you? scared it's a little high. Do you know what I do is I pull these out. Pull the little strands, yeah. you guys. Pull all those out, because those are going to be too much. I said it's borderline. And when everybody sat down and loved and enjoyed it... OK. Just move just it to the side. Move it on the side. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to pour you guys a beer. We have good German beer here tonight. We're going to do Wiener Schnitzel, but it was Spätzle. I love Spätzle. You're going to pan fry it too, right? A little bit of garlic, a little bit of butter. That's a good idea. I'm going to go outside. I hope you guys enjoy. Cook, cook. OK, bye. Okay, table. We're close? Close. OK. As the host prep their sausage, the robot cameras are set to record the dinner table action. And then it's private access only with the confessional cam where the evening sins are truly revealed. The judges are also prepped to catch all the angles of the dinner party adventure. My Oktoberfest sausages have been burnt, but we can fix them. Oh, my gosh. Chef Corbin, how do you fix a burnt sausage? You don't. I would throw it all out. But before the burnt sausages can be addressed, the first guests arrive, Kat and Karen. Come on in. They're quickly followed by Anil and Scott. Hi, hi, Anil. Brad. And the party is underway. We have, we have good German beer here tonight. As drinks are introduced to the guests, the hosts decide to take the social lubrication up one more German notch. We're going to start the night off in a nice German fashion and have a nice German shot. Oh. oh this is where it's going. Yeah, this is where it's going. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Oh. <laughs> Count three. One, two, three. I can't! Oh, it's good. It's not going to give me more wrinkles or anything and dry my skin out and debilitate my... In fact, it's going to make you look younger. Is it? Yes. How young do I look now? Poof. Thank you. The liqueur amuse-bouche seems to have loosened a few tongues. What the sorry. <laughs> Did she just say the F word? In sexy. I think she said freaking. <laughs> you. Karen's got a potty mouth. But before the conversation can get too salty, the hors d'oeuvres are served. Oktoberfest sausage and ciabatti. The mustard is hot. I think that's just regular mustard and ketchup. Oh, look. My dog's deposits. Someone was in the park today. <laughs> a very unconventional meatball. And sausages. Well, she did save the burnt ones. See, that's 10 out of 10, really, for sorting out a little problem. Yeah, these are really awesome, actually. It smells good. Mm. Those are good. That's lovely. I like those. This is solid. It doesn't look good, but it tastes good. I have to say, those German meatballs, for me, absolutely beautiful, and I want that recipe. The appetizer was pretty good. No, the presentation was OK. It's like toothpicks. Well, you know, you can eat sausage and pick your teeth. It's, it's fine. She can't comment on etiquette or service when she's throwing the F-bomb every two minutes. Uh, more wine? Oh, yes, thank you. One bottle down. They're going to get trolley, don't they? They have got to slow down with the drinking. It's just going to derail the party. In the kitchen, Misty is putting the finishing touches on the soup course. Why is she serving up that soup already when guests aren't even sad? Look at this. She doesn't even have a ladle, for gosh sakes. How much does it cost a soup ladle? Nothing. They're really cheap. You never preset a soup. Full of booze and German meat, the guests move inside for the evening's appetizer, a traditional goulash with sour cream. Very nice. Look at all that fat. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Look at <laughs> all this fat here. When you make a good goulash, you can make it the day before, and then when it chills, all the fat will solidify, and then you just peel it all off. Another simple trick is to take white bread yeah. and sponge it up, or just oh. even a paper towel, or you use a ladle yeah. and scoop it all off. Very salty for me. I don't mind it salty. The sour cream cuts it down. It's actually quite I, nice. I, I love goulash. I'm a goulash expert, and the goulash was wrong. It was too runny. It wasn't wow. It didn't wow me. But the guests were wowed enough to finish all their goulash. And abruptly, 
Everyone is up and outside for an impromptu course of liquor and smokes. Oh, it's time for a cigarette break. Ridiculous. It's all about the attitude, OK? You have to have a little bit of it. Yeah, you have to actually. I do have a little bit. Yeah, oh my god, you're totally tight. Oh. All right, let's get those cabbage rolls on the go. Back inside, Misty gets busy plating the first of her hearty mains. Look at that slop. That looks like somebody ate it and then passed it through their colon. No. I thought we'd had the appetizer. No, we still have potato salad, we still have schnitzel, and we still have spatzel. Oh my goodness me, I didn't realize. This is the second course. Mmm, oh, so cool. Yeah. Come on. Lovely people. I really enjoy their company. Yet they didn't pay much attention to the guests. But luckily, the party is keeping itself going outside. They're like, hey, you put this on. Where is it? I'm like, in under her dress. <laughs> And inside, the food is being seated before the guests. It's all out there on the table. It's all going to be cold and horrible. OK, ladies and gents, I'm so sorry for leaving you for so long, but we're ready. Oh, my god, that's huge. So enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Oh, we like the Germans. Das ist gut. Mm. Potato salad isn't horrible. That is one. Big cabbage roll. This is the most unusual portion size. Typically, we don't cook them in a sauce like that. Uh -huh. We make them tiny, the size of our fingers, right. and we don't put meat in them. Would your German grandmother love this? Yeah. One is enough. I'd make them smaller for an appetizer. It's very good. Her best course so far. The potato salad rocked. Actually, it was really good. The cabbage rolls are gross. I don't am. get offended if I don't eat all this. Like, No, I'm not offended at all. It's a lot of food. I'm done. So instead of forcing down the rest of the mountainous portion, the guests go off to their happy place. Honestly, I hate this. I hate this with a passion. Cigarettes, they just break up the whole flow of the party. And surely it can't be good for your palate. And as the mostly untouched first main gets shoveled into the trash, Misty gets busy prepping the second main and starts to feel the time crunch. You're looking at the time saying I had two hours, two hours, two hours went by like this. Brad's cure for party anxiety? Oh. Shots. Cheers. Cheers. It is a bit much. That will be a scene. Yes. But before Brad can do too much entertaining, even, even over here, we have them on the deck. Bradley! Brad! Hey, Brad, where are you, buddy? I, I'm more relax, 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 relax. No, tell me not. Relax. relax. Call everyone, and then we'll serve them at the table. OK. So Brad gathers the guests for a hearty German beatdown, round two. Spatzel. Cheers, boys and girls. Wiener schnitzel with hunter sauce served with bacon chive spetzel. Well, it's meat and potato type meal. Schnitzel's good. The sauce is really salty. She's done it wrong. Ugh. The noodles are wrong, and they're a bit doughy. Wiener schnitzel's good. Okay. Everything else, no good. It was a little too ambitious. The last main course did a pretty good job on it. No, but actually, this is my favorite part of the night. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What she should have done was either stick with the cabbage roll and lose yeah. the schnitzel, or keep the schnitzel and lose the cabbage roll, and that's it. And get Full of booze and spetzel, the party starts to get a little saucy. And, yeah. Sorry, oh my god, sorry. Is that OK? Huh? No. There you go. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of boo business going on. And the final course starts with a wardrobe change. We all have our suits and everything ready? for a dessert of chocolate fondue and fresh fruit in their swimsuits by Brad and Misty's hot tub. Hey, the banana and the chocolate is awesome. Everybody in the pool. <laughs> now, t t just tell me about this as a dessert. This is a lazy man's dessert. Brown bananas, moldy raspberries, and some melted chocolate. OK, boys, here's our feet. Oh, we expect you to eat and drink. I can't eat knowing that they've got feet out. <laughs> They're pretty comfortable with one yeah. another. They're practically naked. Yeah. They're drunk. They're I'm massaging about... each other's toes. Yeah. And the party comes to a big, wet, rowdy finish. <laughs> Listen, they made way too much food, but it was pretty good. 
and they made most of it from scratch. And the hosts were charming, and everybody seemed to have a good time. So how did it go? I think I had a great time. Very genuine people, I love them. What was your favorite course? The beer. The beer. <laughs> the beer. So you were very critical of the food tonight, yeah. right? Yeah. So now tomorrow night you get to cook and they yeah. get to be super critical. You How know, does that make you feel? No problem, it's fine. Bring it on. It's day two, dinner party two, an hour before the guests arrive and Kat and Karen are obsessing about their party schedule. Where, don't we have a list? Yeah, the one that you forgot, that I forgot at home. We are so screwed. I can't take it anymore. What can't you take anymore? Oh my God, is it that bad? Well, their feast starts with molecular gastronomy hors d'oeuvres, a faux caviar melon, and prosciutto on crostini. Next, they're serving up an appetizer of coquille Saint-Jacques, a dish of poached scallops. And for the main course, there's marinated beef tenderloin served with a root vegetable sauce, Czech-style dumplings, and a fennel, celery, and apple salad with a walnut vinaigrette. And for dessert, frozen orange liqueur cream with candied orange peels. Walk okay. us through the menu. Uh, scallops, coquille Saint-Jacques. Coquille Saint-Jacques? Yeah, yes, I can't say it right, but that's OK. Now, the trick to a good coquille Saint-Jacques is the shell. You're serving oh, yeah, in the are, scallop shell. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, when you work with these, these, these guys right here, if you look here, that all has to come off. The nib? Or yeah, whatever get rid it is. of that, because that's. Oh, it's where it attaches to the shell. You got it. You don't want that. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah, they don't. Well, they smell. Oh, they don't smell like the sea, and they smell like your feet. You don't use them. You can add some fresh herbs to that. No, dude, it doesn't go with fresh herbs. Never. This one, never. Could you? I don't really have anything. You've, you've got to have something in here that's no, got color. We have green onions. Okay. What yeah. about the? That's a start. I like that painting. Do you know you've got so much colour? You've got colour in your paintings, your colourful so for people. Your food. <laughs> have I got this right? Your yeah. food, Basically, your entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. What if you do? Don't drink too much because you take your eye off the ball. Yeah, no. You'll see no, no. it's a competition. Yeah. Focus, focus. Don't smoke one cigarette tonight. That's your challenge. Yeah, yeah, I want to give you a challenge. Happen. No. We, we done? I think so. Because I think they need to get on because I'm starting to panic. You now have them. an hour. Right? We have an hour. Yeah, great. okay, that's fine. Okay. That's great. Lovely. The judges get into place as the hosts start fielding their first dinner mishap. Oh my god. Ah, see? They burnt. Really? Yeah, this is like, look at this. Misty and Brad are the first to arrive. Oh, Misty looks nice. And see, look, Brad dressed up again. <laughs> Anil and Scott aren't far behind. Hello! Hello. Come on in! Hi. And the party has begun. As everyone gets settled, Karen heads off in search of drinks for the guests. But first things first. Slowly. Yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look. She's going to get plastered. It's all going to go horribly wrong. Pills are OK. From a hostessing point of view, they did very well to remember that Misty likes a particular drink, so they had it in, and they served it to her. And they know the guys like beer, so they have lots of cold beer. As everyone has their first sips, Karen reveals the evening's unique hors d'oeuvre adventure. Have you ever heard of molecular gastronomy? Not at all. Okay, I'm, this is going to be an interactive appetizer. Okay. I'm so, excited so for cool. that. It? Molecular is about the, the chemical reactions in the process of food, so it's right. the science of food. I like the idea of them doing this. I think it's cool. And it's been around for years, but people just don't do it because they don't know how to do it. But Professor Karen is ready to school them. So I'm going to give you each one sort of splash. This is honeydew melon. And then that one's cantaloupe. So what we're going to do is whatever melon you want to use, you just insert it. Yeah. <laughs> this stuff is calcium chloride. It's a food stabilizer. Watch what happens. OK, watch. Watch, 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 watch. See how it goes in? Drop, 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 drop. And you get these little pearls. Well, this actually cooks for one minute in this solution. And then you transfer it with these guys into water. And then you eat them. Well, I can't wait to try this. Careful, not too fast. Well, I'm not going to put my fingers. Fingers clean? Yeah, there you go. OK, this is lovely. This, yes. Hi, Ooh, I love it. The transformed melon caviar gets placed atop prosciutto and crostini, and the evening's hors d'oeuvre is served. Cheers, little canapé. Cheers. Cheers. But how will it taste? The flavor's not bad. The bread's a little too hard for my taste. 
thinner crostini, nicer prosciutto. Mm -hmm. I think I put a pinch of salt on to bring the, the, the sweetness of the melon out too. It was like bubbles, fruity bubbles. I don't know, maybe the ones I was doing wasn't turning out right, but it had like a, like a chemical aftertaste. Cat's right on schedule, putting the finishing touches on the first course as Karen seats the guests at the table to enjoy their scallop appetizer, Coquille St. Jacques. I'm very excited about this. So am I. I love seafood. The seafood is good. Something that's simple that they did is they just put a colorful cocktail napkin on the bottom. That works. Do you know it's really nice? Mm. It's very nice. Not bad. Lovely. The flavor's there. It is a little mushy. The scallops tasted a little off. A four out of ten. Well, this is lovely. I thought you would be the one cooking since you're the food snob and all. Misty was actually, she was out for game. I thought she was going to be relaxing all afternoon. Hey, I'm not, I'm not relaxing. This is, this is work, man. I, I got, I got some sweat happening. <laughs> You know, they're in better shape than I thought they were going to be. They may take this competition. But back in the kitchen, Kat is only just starting to prep her tenderloin main. I noticed the main course they have out, and it's not cooked yet. So I, I, it might be a late evening. So, Shouldn't that be in the oven by now? This is half an hour. They're not going to be eating for ages. And Karen is showing familiar cracks in her hostess armor. I'm feeling stressed out. Oh, I need to breathe. Why is she so cranky? Who's flicked her switch? You just don't want your guests to hear it swearing like that. It's just horrible. But let's just take five, because we have a bit of time. And, uh... OK, well, let's take a five. Yeah, and now they're going for a cigarette, and this is where it's all going to oh. fall apart. <laughs> As Karen and the guests have a leisurely smoke, Back at the stove, Kat is taking her time dressing up her roast. She's putting smoked bacon on top, which is nice, but I would wrap the whole thing, then pan sear it. Whoa, what are we doing here? Oh, it's one of those silly oh, things. Oh, it's a crap thermometer. You know how you, you know how to tell when meat's done? You squeeze it. That should have been the oven a half an hour ago. Cook for 25, 30 <sighs> minutes, and then rest for another 20 minutes. That's almost an hour. Oh. What are we going to do for an hour? Luckily, Karen is keeping the guests laughing. Come on, baby, let me see you snap. Come on, let's snap. You need to put an attitude in it. Ah, see? That's perfect. I love you. I love everybody. Looks like Karen is doing a great job. Everybody's laughing. Somebody has to pay attention to them. We haven't seen much of Kat. But when Kat does come, she's not coming with a smile. It's more like an aggravated, OK, I have to be here for a couple of seconds. She's right. Yeah, yeah she is right. Oh. And while she waits for her tenderloin, Kat readies her side dishes, some that look promising. Fennel and apple is beautiful together. And some that don't. You know when you have surgery and you're not supposed to have solid food? Yeah. Yeah, lots yeah. of stuff, yeah. Table. Two hours into the party and still no main, the guests are back inside and finding any way possible to take their minds off their stomachs. Oh, yeah! It was a really long wait. Scotty, no. I almost called a local chicken restaurant. I was hungry. The dinner part of it is taking an extremely long time. I'm starved. I don't need flowers. I just need good tasting food. Finally, the tenderloin is ready. Trick to slicing a good beef tenderloin is the right knife. Oh, look how dull that knife is. Look at the blood! Look at the blood! It hasn't rested enough. It has not rested enough. Look at all that. All of that but, is know, the flavor. Under the right circumstances, there. she couldn't leave it for any longer. It's getting embarrassing. She had to cut it now. And at long last, the main is served. Thank you very much. Marinated beef tenderloin served with root vegetable sauce, Czech-style dumplings, and a fennel celery apple salad with a walnut vinaigrette. That's a beautiful vinaigrette. What is that? That's the baby food. If you're a good little girl, you can have your mushy bananas for dessert. That's a good girl. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to soak it in the sauce and then eat it. OK. It tastes like Unsalted, undercooked bread. bread. Yeah. Salad. 
needs a bit more acid. Try the beef. The beef is not okay. overcooked. And she did listen with the little coloring thing and brought a little bit of life to the plate. Beautiful. Very nice. Beef's the only thing. Yeah. That's good. The, the beef tenderloin was moist, nice, but uh, bland. I feel like I was in prison and they gave me some water-soaked bread. So Anil decides to take flavor into his own hands. I see them all the time. And he's got heavy hands. This is just a vegetarian. But she's not a vegetarian. Um, it really needed a lot of salt. It was extremely bland. As Kat puts the finishing touches on dessert, Karen decides to entertain the guests with a cold, moist rub down. Well, that's a great service to offer your guests. You get a wipe down. With the same napkin. Yes. It's cold. <laughs> Who brings wet, cold paper towels to put by my neck? First of all, my makeup's going to run. And dessert gets its table debut. Frozen orange very liqueur well cream with candied orange peels. Very well done. Oh, this is very nice. It's, um... It's got a weird texture to it. It tastes like um, sweet eggs splashed with booze. It's a mess. I don't like it. A mess for dessert. Dessert was interesting. It was a little bit watery, but it was flavorful. Cheers, cheers, cheers. The sugar high from dessert has Karen and Anil putting on a show to mixed reactions. I'm kind of in an odd place being a construction worker. To the left, to the left. Not what I'm used to at all. I love him. I know his awesome. Cheers, Thank you guys for coming cheers. over. Listen, it wasn't a horrible night. It wasn't the best night. Beef filet was good, scallops were pretty good, and I thought it was fun with the molecular thing. Is it better than Wiener Schnitzel? I don't know. I felt bad for the both of them, because they didn't have that flow between each other. It was all a mess. There was no organization. This is the highlight of the evening, the little flower, and I can make a headpiece. And... How do you think your party's going to go, then? Mama didn't make a loser. It's day three, dinner party three, and Anil and Scott are focusing on their food fundamentals. Oh, nice! Hello! How are you? How are you doing? Mm. The menu starts with hors d'oeuvres of stuffed mushrooms with cream cheese and salami filling, and endive canoes with mango chutney and pork. Next up is a Trinidadian twist on a familiar poached scallop dish, Coquille Saint Jacques. For the main course, there's baked sea bass, steamed asparagus, and fingerling potatoes. And for their big finish, dessert is a peanut butter pie. Let's see your fish. It looks beautiful. I'm thinking 15 minutes. Well, you'll know when you touch it, right? Yeah. I'm going to do the cumin, coriander, black pepper, sea salt, truffle oil, and honey. OK, so can I just tell you, you've got big, bold flavors. It's too much. Don't do truffle. Hot pan, season it, olive oil, all your spices, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's how you do it. And then you're going to serve that with these new potatoes here. Yeah, and, um, and the potatoes are going to be done in, 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 um, in rosemary. What are you showcasing on the plate? Sea bass. So then why do you want to take away from the sea bass and have the potato fight with the sea bass? Well, rosemary is a very piney, strong, bold flavor, right? This is a beautiful, simple potato. You parboil them. Maybe you do a little saute action, a little bit of butter, a little olive oil, sea salt, pepper. That's it. OK, now show me around. So this is where we're going to have dinner tonight, and most, most of the evening is going to spend here. I love this. There's so much color here. I think this, when everybody sat down. Swapping out. Take it out. Let everybody enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's part of the house. It's the way you are. And then take it away. Fantastic. I actually made a, a runner up for that. The only thing in my mind mm -hmm. is they're a little bit sunken in there. Do you have something that's shorter, maybe? Shorter? I'm sure I could pull something up. See what you can do. And then everything else I love. <laughs> As the hosts prep, the judges get into place. Store-bought chutney. Hey, Misty and Brad, they made all theirs from scratch. Even the molecular cuisine was done from scratch, out of a jar. You know, actually, this is a good idea. Nobody's kitchen, really, is ever big enough. It's a really good idea to take things out of your kitchen that you're not going to need and put them in the garage if you've got one, or a spare room, or outside if it's a nice day. Brad and Misty are the first to arrive, bearing gifts. Hello! Oh, hello!
Whoa, Whoa, look at these two. What has happened to Brad? Oh, nice he's dressed up. In a pink shirt. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, thank you. I'll let you deal with that. Oh, this is actually my favorite from Florida. When somebody gives you a gift, open it in front of them and say something nice. Cat and Karen are next to appear. Hi. Hi. Welcome. This is for you. A toast Cheers. to start the party, and the hors d'oeuvres are immediately served. Mushroom caps stuffed with cream cheese and salami, and endive canoes with mango chutney and pork. <laughs> okay, plate appeal. None. It's quite spicy, actually. In fact, the chilies just hit my mouth. This looks like. Don't say it! Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Peanuts and corn, that's all I'm gonna say is peanuts and corn. Ooh, sweet. That's the store-bought one. I'd return that canoe. Mushroom cups, I love mushroom cups because they were spicy, I like spicy food. I did like the spiciness that was in there, I like the creaminess, but it was cold. While the hors d'oeuvres might have been cold, the host is anything <laughs> but. Look at me. Oh, I am like a wet thing. It's really hot in here. The AC is going crazy. Oh, look, look at him. him! Oh my God, and Neil! Oh, please! I'm going to send a little thought message. God, yes. please tell O'Neill to change his shirt. But after a quick trip to the kitchen, Scott has a different message for O'Neill. O'Neill, you left this on this hot burner. Look don't, what don't stir. I, that's what I'm saying. Why did it, you need to stir I it? I didn't. I'm just telling you. You left it over here, and it was boiling. It was all boiling. He ain't so fabulous after all. I'm actually stressing a little bit, but I'm working it out. <laughs> I thought it was going to be easier for me, but it's not. He got done with it on the burner, turned the burner off, but left it on the burner. So look what it did. <laughs> Why? Because he left it on the hot burner. He just turned it off and left it. Yeah, he's laughing at me, really. No, I'm not laughing Lovely. at you. And you know, I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing with you. All right, Neil, just relax. He knows. He's the anchor in the relationship. Look at this mess. Look at this. It's curdled. It's What's curdled. Going in there? It's oh, crazy. the cheese is separated. Lumpy, clumpy, curdled sauce. And cheddar cheese. Who puts grated cheddar cheese on Coquille Saint Jacques? No one. As Scott seats the guests, Anil takes a moment to swap out his centerpieces. Anil has done the right thing there. He's taken away the beautiful big centerpiece. Everybody's seen it. We love it. It looks very nice. Gorgeous. Replace it with the little one. And a deja vu course hits the table. Oh, that's a beautiful shell. Anil's island twist on the popular poached scallop appetizer, Coquille Saint Jacques. This is curdled. Look at this. Look at, look at, look at, look at. I've had better. It tastes artificial. It doesn't taste fresh. Right? And there's too much curdled cheese. It's not good. The best thing about that dish is the bread. Karen's was better. The scallop dish was amazing. Like, I loved it. I could have licked the bowl, the conch shell, and taken it home with me. No, the scallops were not good at all. I couldn't enjoy it because it was too greasy from the cheese. But the shell was nice. Can I get a steak knife for the, uh, the shell? <laughs> you can't eat the shell, baby. With the appetizers finished up, it's time for another copycat course from the last two parties, tobacco shooters. Oh, no, please don't. No, I don't want to see this. And Karen is copycatting her antics from the first party. You're an A. OK, maybe, no, actually, it's probably my B&B. Yeah? But in the middle of her smoke, Karen pops back in to give Anil some tough love advice. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put on a, um, a vest. Yeah, yeah, just cover it. Actually, I like Karen for that. Oh. And that's a caring thing to do. You look like <laughs> <a> smoke, right? <laughs> oh my god. With a quick look at the thermostat, it appears Anil has good reason to be sweaty and stressed out. No! 99? Who would do that? Who would be a vile to do that? Somebody's trying to get me. I'm going to put it at 50 degrees. Let the bitches freeze in the house. But Anil puts his moisture mishap immediately behind him and gets down to plating his mane. 
I will say this, their kitchen is tidy. Likes to get rid of all the debris. It's good. You know, when you have the open concept, which they have in their house, you've got to keep a tidy kitchen. But even a wardrobe change can't seem to shake off Anil's performance anxiety. Oh, one potato at a time. Have you not got a spoon that takes two potatoes, or maybe three? Played the main course. By the time this gets to the table, this is going to be stone cold. What can't I stand? Cold plates. Come on, do one at a time. One asparagus at a time, please. Yes, there you go. One at a time. This one is pretty good. Oh, f he just dropped one on the floor. Now what's going to happen? Because he's counted all the asparagus out. Number one rule when you're prepping vegetables and side dishes, always prepare extra. While Anil is over-focused on the plating, Scott is under-focused on the guests. Anil's trying to do his best because he's in the kitchen. Scott is Scott, and... Oh, a fly on the wall. So, um... The main is finally served, and the guests are overwhelmed with joy. It's time to dig in to the baked sea bass, steamed asparagus, and fingerling potatoes. It's ice cold. It's cold. But look at overall presentation pretty good. He just yeah, yeah. took way too long. It, it's a little bit of an empty plate. Well, he did the potatoes the way I asked. Yeah. If they were warm, mm -hmm. they'd be pretty good. Mm. And the asparagus is, look at this, it's mushy. Very salty. Cold. Bland. How can you get this wrong? The fish didn't go well with potatoes, and the potatoes walked away from the fish. The girls found bones in theirs. Thankfully, I only ate a half of mine, so I did not find any bones. I have a big one. Ah, oh, there's one. Just thought it was kind of a sparse plate means a short meal. And Scott's not only clearing the table, but he's also taking charge of dessert. Until Anil takes over for his patented plating perfectionism. Good thing the pie won't get cold. Put it out for God's sake, Anil! Then, one at a time, Dessert is served. Peanut butter pie with fresh blueberries. Amazing. Oh my goodness me. It's Christmas morning. Look at all the layers in the crust there. That's a sign of a good crust. I have to have this recipe. Are you, are you wanna have a moment? Oh. That was gorgeous. And dessert might be over, but the party isn't. As Anil and Scott introduce a special guest, Marilyn. Woo! And since all the guests are up for it, it's conga time. Well, where do we go from here? Dessert was amazing. Table setting was nice. This is going to be difficult. And now for the judging. It's judgment day. Only one of you is going to be able to take home over a thousand dollars of cookware. But more importantly, the bragging rights to say, I am the dinner party war champion and hold this trophy up oh. high. Brad and Misty, before we tell you what we think, I think it's important that you see what your guest said. The appetizer was pretty good. The goulash was wrong. It was too runny. The potato salad rocked, actually. It was really good. The cabbage rolls are gross. It wasn't wow. It didn't wow me. Your traditional little sausages there looked like little logs of something else. But I have to tell you, the flavor was there. Sausages, you burnt them on the top, but you fixed it, you cut it off. Very tasty. Your main courses, you had your cabbage rolls, way too big of a portion. You had your potato salad, way too much. But it wasn't horrible. The Wiener schnitzel. Very flavorful. You worked very hard. You were looking after people, you were serving drinks, you were cooking, and it didn't throw you. And I thought that was very good of you. You were very welcoming, you were very warm, you were very nice with everybody. And it was fun. Karen and Kat. The scallops tasted a little off. The, the beef tenderloin was moist, nice, but uh, bland. I feel like I was in prison and they gave me some water-soaked bread. Your first course, you did molecular gastronomy. Not a lot of people can pull that off. It was interactive, it was fun, it was very theatrical, and it brought everyone together. Your first course, these scallops, surprisingly, were very tender. I didn't mind the sauce. 
your main course. It took a long time. You did serve it with that root vegetable gravy, which really wasn't a gravy. It was baby puree. Now your dessert. It stuck to the spoon. It had this weird consistency. It was a miss. This dinner party was like five different people had all done their own bit and come together, but it didn't work. What did I say? I said, lay off the smokes, keep off the booze. And you did both of those things, you dropped the ball. Anil and Scott. I did like the spiciness that was in there, I like the creaminess, but it was cold. Anil's trying to do his best because he's in the kitchen. Scott is Scott. A fly on the wall. The fish didn't go well with potatoes, and then potatoes walked away from the fish. Your appetizers. You had the mushroom caps. They're a bit dry, a bit wrinkly. I wasn't a fan. Your canoes. Very creative. The color was a bit unpleasant. And the mango was store-bought. Now your first course. You forgot about the sauce on the stove. It boiled. It got all gloopy. It was like a big stringy curdled mess. Main course. The asparagus was overcooked. The potatoes were cold. The fish was a bit bland. Your dessert. Peanut butter pie. Best dessert for the week, by far. Love you, love you, Ho. You put things together beautifully. But somewhere tonight, I think you've got stage fright. And thank goodness somebody said, change your shirt. And I just think that your nerves got the better of you. So you've all heard what we have to say, but now we're going to give you our scores. Brad and Misty, you had enough meat to feed the entire country of Germany. Your score on food is 7 out of 10. Fondue in a hot tub? But your guests were all very happy. I'm going to give you 6 out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 13 out of 20. Karen and Kat, yeah. an experiment that went wrong. Your score on food, 6 out of 10. You dropped your molecular ball. I'm going to give you 5 out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 11 out of 20. Which means Kat and Karen are out of the running. Anil and Scott, I believe we're going to give you the award for taking the longest ever to present and plate a dish. Your score on food, 6 out of 10. Anil and Scott will need an 8 for presentation to win. The party dragged. I'm going to give you six out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 12 out of 20. Which means today's dinner party war champion, Brad and Misty! <laughs> overall, you know what, honestly, overall, it was a really good experience. I'm glad I met the people that I met. I'm a good sport. Congratulations to the winners. We won, woo! We're gonna go home and uh, Make it sexy time.